We find ourselves in the book of Ezekiel. We are in chapter 23. Ezekiel chapter 23. And our message title is, In All Things, think about this, In All Things, Stay Loyal. So it is an exhortation to us that we remain loyal to the Lord. Our world is changing quickly. Uh, Our world is going to a place where, um, gosh, we're not going to recognize the United States in just a few years, if not sooner, uh, because things are changing. But not only in the United States, all over the world. There's conferences taking place right now. Uh, I don't know if you tuned in to uh, Pastor Jack Hibbs, but he uh, mentions a site to go take a look at this. And they're talking about uh, uh, voting next year to, again, become uh, or move us closer to being one. Where especially like the, and we talked about this before last year or a couple years ago, where the World Health Organization will call the, the shots for, um, the, not literally shots, but yeah, shots, for everyone, should something start spreading across the world globally, they want to say that uh, they want the countries to give up their sovereignty and to uh, be in obedience to what the World Health Organization and, and, and organizations such as this uh, will be governing at that time. So it, it's a crazy time. Uh, they were saying, as I watched that uh, video play out, um, they're in... Uh, in in Europe, and they were saying that uh, not one country objected to what was being said, and not even America is, is objecting. And, you know, and they say by this time next year, they're going to take some, they're going to make a vote. And right now, it's a time to look at these things for our people to get involved in them uh, uh, and, and make best decisions for the United States to keep us uh, hopefully outside of the United Nations and stuff. But things are going crazy. But the Bible says that they're going to go that way. So in all things, you and I are to stay loyal to our Lord, loyal to Him. Uh, know Him, know what He stands for, knows what, know what the Word is, and make decisions according to the Word of God. So let's ask the Lord to bless our time, continue blessing our time, and uh, uh, that the study, it's a hard study tonight. 49 verses, uh, and it's, it's hard, and it's going to be a little graphic for some of us. Uh, it's going to uh, get down to some... Um, nitty-gritty and so we are to learn from it as the Lord is judging Judah via Ezekiel the prophet as he shares with them let's pray so Lord a great chapter before us a a hard chapter Lord but we learn from it Lord that we are to stay uh, faithful and loyal to you no matter what comes down our way that as decisions are made in our country Lord as man will look to man and get behind man and and have an allegiance to man, Lord, remind us that we belong to you. And as we see these changes taking place, Lord, help us to stay loyal to you, to be faithful to you, Lord. For we know that soon you will come for your church, Lord. So during these times of uh, transition for our world, Lord, help us, Lord, to be lights for you. And we ask you these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So in the chapter before us, the one we just finished last week, right, Uh, Ezekiel dealt with uh, uh, spiritual adultery that was taking place in Judah. And we have always been exhorted, you and I, that no matter what is going on with churches, even across America, uh, churches that are no longer really uh, teaching the Word and whatnot, we have always been taught that we stay in the Word of God. No matter how popular some things are and they want us to go that way, because everybody's going that way, uh, we are to remain on upon the word of god we've always been taught this to stay loyal to the lord let me say this it's personal it becomes personal people will say well what about this and what they'll be in your face but it is personal for you and i to choose to stay loyal to the lord Um, everyone has trials (coughs) everyone is challenged and everyone is tested right Everyone is either rewarded for it or we're disciplined according to actions that we have taken. In some cases, as it was with Judah, her punishment matched her sins because we learn God is just. So as the Lord punishes uh, or punished uh, his people in, in, in past times, it was because he was just. So may you and I learn Uh, from this study, that in all things, we are to stay loyal to our Lord. So let's begin. Our 
chapter has to do with two sisters, and they're both harlots, right? So two harlot sisters, and we're going to talk about uh, what the Lord has to say. So we begin with verse 1. The word of the Lord came again to me, saying, Son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one mother. They committed harlotry in Egypt. They committed harlotry in their youth. Their breasts were there embraced. Their virgin bosoms were there pressed. The names Ohola, and the elder, and Oholiba, her sister, they were mine. And they bore sons and daughters. As for their names, Samaria is Ohola, and Jerusalem is Oholiba. So church, the prophet Ezekiel here concluded, as I said, chapter 22, with letting all know how defective leadership, bad leadership, if you may, uh, 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 had led the people down the round trail, right? Uh, so it was the leadership that either keeps you or exhorts you, hey, we got to stay in line. we got to hold the line. Well, we're thinking of doing this. Come on, it's Sunday. We should be at church. Well, we're going to do this and that. Yes, but don't forget the things of God. Leadership always kind of encourages, exhorts uh, God's people to stay uh, with the things that God accepts. We learned in our last time together that leadership had really uh, messed up or was part of a big reason for God's people going astray. Uh, so here in chapter 23, we have a, a parable then, right? These two sisters. We have a parable, a story, a picture, if you may, that can be interpreted to reveal a hidden meaning. So the parable will give us something in the front, but behind it, there is a hidden meaning, if you may. And typically, it's moral or it's a political one. So this chapter emphasizes uh, Israel's political adultery in which she sought security in political alliances with foreign powers. So think about that, right? You belong to the Lord. And if you start seeking elsewhere or start going somewhere else, you're kind of like and not asking God for help. You know, let's just say even with, with our jobs, you lose your job and uh, there's other jobs and there's this and there's that and, and you want the Lord to lead you. But the other jobs seem to be they would compromise you. They would compromise, you know, your, your being a Christian. You need to choose what you're going to do. And so sometimes it's best to let those jobs go and continue to uh, seek the Lord out and, and be faithful to Him. All of us, I said, have trials. All of us go through uh, challenges. And in all of it, we are to be faithful to the Lord, loyal to the Lord. He's looking uh, uh, for that from us. And He does reward us. He will uh, bless you at the end. He will take care of you. We just have to uh, go through these things. Right? So... This chapter, again, emphasizes Israel's political adultery in which she sought security and political alliances with foreign uh, powers. Today, you and I today are familiar with the tensions uh, between the Republican and Democratic alliances. In fact, we see hatred across America, right, uh, because of this division. We see it. Uh, but here's a fact. Times are going to become worse. They're not going to get better. People say, oh, you doomsayers. You know, you guys are always, you Christians are always saying things are going to become worse. They are going to become worse. The Bible says that. Uh, and it's going to become worse as our country now leaves behind this Republican, leaves behind these democratic things and these differences, and our country moves toward globalism. That's where our country is headed. We, we want to be part of the, of the big thing and uh, of being global, and so that's where we're going. Now, forget the differences between the Democrats and the Republicans. The question is, will you follow the new world order? Are you going to follow the new world order that will put all its confidence in man? Or will you, um, in all things, stay loyal to our God, our Lord uh, our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ? That is the question. So let's go back to some of these things, we, the first uh, four verses that we read, right? From verse 4, uh, going that way, um, Ohala, oh, Ohala means she has. She has her own tent. 
And also from verse 4, we learn that Ohala is Samaria. That's who she represents. Samaria, as you recall, became the capital of the ten tribes of Israel who had a split from the Davidic dynasty under Solomon's son, Rehoboam, right? God's temple was in Jerusalem, but because of the split, the ten tribes set up their own center of worship. It wasn't good for God's people to split. It's never good for people to split up. And so we're going to even talk about that as it, as it comes to play. But, but understand this. No matter how we split, even if we split up, the ten tribes say, well, there's nothing with us with the son of Jesse, meaning um, Rehoboam said, hey, I'm going to make life tough for you guys. These guys could have kept praying and seeking out the Lord. Lord, change the, the hearts of Rehoboam. Make his heart more like Solomon. Make him be more like David. Lord, help us. We don't want to. Uh, they could have stayed. They could have worked things out. But pride fills men's hearts. And they say, if we're not going to get any representation, we're going to take off on our own. God didn't want that to happen, but it happened. So the ten tribes that broke away became known as the northern kingdom. And they were called Israel. And the two tribes that stayed, Benjamin and Judah, were known as the Southern Kingdom, right? <clears throat> so what happened was, uh, again, God's temple was in Jerusalem. Uh, but because of the split, the ten tribes, what they did is they went and they set up their own um, uh, center of worship. And also from verse 4, we learn that Jerusalem uh, is O Holy Ba. So these two sisters are represented by Samaria and Jerusalem, right? And they have these, these names on them. All right. So uh, let's talk about the older sisters, Samaria. Verse 5. Ohola played the harlot even though she was mine. And she lusted for her lovers, the neighboring Assyrians, who were clothed in purple, captains and rulers, all of them desirable young men, Horsemen riding on horses. Thus she committed her harlotry with them. All of them choice men of Assyria. And with all for whom she lusted. With all their idols she defiled herself. She has never given up her harlotry brought from Egypt. For her in her youth they had lain with her. Pressed her virgin bosom. And poured out their immorality upon her. Therefore... I have delivered her into the hands of her lovers, into the hand of the Assyrians, for whom she lusted. They uncovered her nakedness, took away her sons and daughters, and slew her with the sword. She became a byword among women, for they had executed judgment on her. Church, here's the bottom line. Ohola played the harlot, states verse 5. That's what it says. To the attractive macho horsemen, verse 6, of Assyria. Now, look at it this way. You're out there. You have split. Uh, you don't have that, that kingdom uh, kind of uh, background with, uh, with uh, Judah and, and Benjamin, those tribes uh, from the line of David. And so they're looking now elsewhere, and they're impressed with the armies of the other countries, uh, their horses, uh, because a horse was a big deal at the time. Uniforms, if you may. And the picture is they're looking at uh, not only handsome in that respect, but might. And so they're looking at them and they're desiring to be like them or to have an alliance with them, if you may. So um, from verse 5, God calls, uh, God calls her his, though. Did you notice in verse 5? God's still calling her his. So even if there had been a split in the kingdom, even if that had happened, God does not stop loving his people. And I say this, uh, I say that to say this, if a Christian couple divorces, right? If a Christian couple divorces, yes, it is sad. Yes, it is unfortunate. But listen, divorcee, God has not stopped loving you. God still loves you. It breaks his heart. It is sad that man would choose not to work it out. It breaks his heart. 
It is sin because it's pride that, that would keep us. Let's just say if it was just those kind of things, right? There's other reasons to get divorced, but we're not talking right now about sexual immorality. We're talking just about, I don't get along with you, and, and the divorce paper says uh, they have been divorced because of irreconcilable differences. When it's that, arguing, bickering, battering, oh, I don't want to fight in front of the kids anymore, da, 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 da. we're causing more harm here at home, let's get a divorce. That is pride. That is a wrong thing, and the Lord uh, doesn't approve of that type of divorce. The Bible gives permission for sexual immorality. If the uh, wife is a, a, a child molester or the husband is a child molester or something like that, and, and, or, or sex outside of that thing, then uh, the Bible gives permission. It says you can do it. You don't have to do it, but the Bible says you can do it. So let's go back. Even if you have a divorce for whatever reason, Understand this, God does not hate you. God is not against you. I mean, he's upset, yes, right? But if you cry out to him, you recognize your error, God is going to be there for you. He still loves you. He has not stopped loving you. From verse 5, we also learn that Ohala lusted for her lovers, the neighboring Assyrians, right? When a family split, again, Often there is insecurity or a desire to be, a desire for one to be or to feel successful. In other words, they don't want to feel like the losers. Some people say, well, you're doing good and we don't know about him, but you're surely doing good. And there's a little sense of pride that will come to that woman. Or for the guys, you know, well, it's about time. You know, she was sucking you dry with all your finances and this and that. So you will be better off uh, without them. So there's this little thing about pride that we want to show the other that we're doing better without them. So for the ten tribes of the north, or Ohala, Samaria, if you may, <coughs> they were looking at these other armies to make them feel important, to make them feel wanted, to make them feel esteemed. What are they not doing? They're not being loyal to God. They're not returning to Him and saying, look, we're in a mess. You know, I'm, I'm feeling this way. I, I'm feeling like I'm, I'm not, I don't have value. I'm feeling like I, I'm not any good. I'm struggling. If you take that to someone else other than the Lord, you're robbing yourself of an opportunity for the Lord to bless you. Again, God loves his kids, and he loved them who still went up to the north. And that's why, as I said, he called her mine, if you may. So, for whatever reason, Ohola did not humble herself before the Lord. She did not ask him to help her uh, in, whatever else she felt, in whatever else she felt that was missing in her life. And this is something she should have done. If you're here tonight, if you're listening on radio, if you're watching on our stream, if you have gone through a divorce and you're going through a real tough time, uh, listen, cry out to the Lord. Cry out to him. Let him know how you're feeling. He already knows how you're feeling. Lord, I got this big hole in my heart. I have this big void. Yeah, I'm ashamed to look at here. I'm ashamed to go to the city market because people are going to think this or that. Listen, don't worry about everybody else. Get right with the Lord. Come back to him. He will cover you. He will be your cover. He will take care of you, right? So think about this. If God helped Hagar, how many of you guys remember Hagar, right? If God helped Hagar after Abraham sent her off to the desert, he certainly is going to help anyone who comes out and cries to him. I mean, you think about Hagar's situation. You know, Sarah didn't like the way she treated um, her, her son versus uh, little Isaac, right? She wanted Isaac to be the favorite one, but Hagar had Ishmael, and she seemed like uh, Ishmael was picking on Isaac, and and so there's this little rift between these two women. And Sarah comes up to Abraham, get rid of your servant. What, what do you want me to do with her? Get rid of her. I don't care what you do with her. Get rid of her. And so he sends her off. And she's out there in the desert. And, and what does she do? Does she go with the first man that comes her way? The first guy on the camel? Ooh, the camel looks good. And so do you. No. Right? She cried out to the Lord. And the angel of the Lord appeared to her. And he said he's going to take care of him. Ishmael, and she sent him out there to die, but he said, I'm going to take care of him. I'm going to raise him up, and he's going to have lots of family and blah, 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 and I'm going to take care of you. 
So it's a picture of then those who continue with the Lord. I understand. He, we're human beings. We make mistakes. And we find ourselves in weird situations. But that is no excuse to not remain faithful and loyal to the God who saved you. The God that you know is real. We must encourage one another. Stay with the program, people would say. Hey, stay in love with Jesus Christ. Stay in love with him no matter what's going on. And that's your advice to people you know who are Christians and they're going through something or they've gone through something. Well, you know, now they're saying this and now they're saying that. Listen, friends, stop. Stop the bickering. You know, humble yourself before the Lord. Cry out to him. Let God take care of that. You stay uh, being uh, loyal to the Lord. All right. If you feel alone... And there is a need, cry out to the Lord. In all things, as I said, stay loyal to him. Trust him. We need to trust him. Don't do as Ohola did. She did not remain faithful to God. In fact, she looked for help among the foreigners, if you may. Foreigners mean other religions, right? And that was adding fuel to the fire that began at the split. The split began because they said, well, you're not going to take care of us. We're not going to take care of you. Nah, 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 nah. And they took off. So that's already a wrong thing. To add fuel to it is to go with the enemy or to go to another religion. Results, uh, committed spiritual and political adultery is what happened. <clears throat> she accepted their idols, says verse 7. So you accept the idols, then you start praying to them and doing what the other religion is telling you to do. In that, then she defiled herself before God. You're doing the wrong things before the Lord. She thought, again, she would find value in the Assyrian eyes. Thus, the games that she played in Egypt when she was young, she employed again. That's what verse 8 is saying. You know, sometimes we don't hear everything that happened in Egypt with the Israelites. We hear about the leadership and how they were this, there were slaves and this and that, but they also played games, and it says so right here, right? So she employed those things again in verse 8. So church, no matter how bad our situation becomes, we should not, we cannot employ our BC ways to advance our cause. Don't do that. Don't go back to your BC ways to, um, to advance our cause. We must, in all things, stay, as I said, loyal to our God. The Bible says that he is our present help in our time of need. we got to remember that. God knows what you're going through, and it is a test for you as well. Are you going to be loyal to him only in the good times? Do we not pray, Lord, even in the tough times, Lord, help me be loyal to you and help me demonstrate it by continuing to, do, to serve you, to love you, and to seek you out even more. If anything, uh, James was called uh, Mr. Bowlegged Knees because he spent so much time praying before the Lord. And some of us don't even get on our knees anymore. We just don't. Some of us, I understand why. It's hard to get back up, right? We need help. But I get that. But as long as we can, we should be, uh, in a sense, on our knees, meaning that we should be dedicating that time in prayer to our Lord. All right. From verse 9 and 10, we learn that Ohola did not seek the Lord, but trusted her own ways. And so the Lord delivered her into the hands of her lover, lovers and they used her nothing worse than being used you think you're going to be esteemed you think you're going to be valued and all of a sudden you give everything they ask of you and they turn around and do nothing and so they uh they used her destroying her sons and daughters right that's what it says here which means okay let's look at it this way samaria right the 10 tribes around her, and then even more villages and more towns around her, populated things. And so some theologians believe that when it says destroy their sons and daughters, I mean, when the enemy came, when Assyria came after the northern kingdom, they sliced and diced. They were wicked people, wicked people. And they uh, slaughtered all, her, all the towns and things around her that belonged to her that were associated with her because she had never come back down to Jerusalem. So it was a, a bad thing. And also from verse 10, that she became a byword among women means that the other foreign nations, right? We call it America, America, not Americo. It's not a man. She's a nation. It's always she. So the other nations, they knew and talked about her badly uh, for she had disobeyed her God. 
They're thinking, man, how could this happen to anybody? And then you come and try and take our gods, and your God punishes you, and our own people beat you up? She became a byword. A byword meaning that everybody talked bad about them. They executed judgment their way, it says. It wasn't pretty. Again, the Assyrians, when they executed judgment, they, they're the ones that when they dragged you away, they put fish hooks in the guy's backs and stuff and dragged you. Keep up the pace or the things would cut into your back and slice you. It was a horrific, they were a horrific people, the Assyrians. And so it wasn't pretty. And God says, he let them execute judgment their way. Right? It was like God saying, you wanted and trusted in them. You got them. You wanted this kind of medicine. You got them. It's interesting, Pastor Chuck was mentioning in, his, uh, in the Word for Today Bible that what is it with us, and, and certainly what was it with um, Israel, the ten tribes of the north, that they wanted what was prohibited for them. They wanted an alliance with people who hated God. Now, what is it with them? Then he brings it to us. What is it with us as Christians and as human beings that we want the things that are prohibited for us? What is it that we go after the things that we know we are prohibited from? And so in that, we go to the third part. Therefore, because our flesh and our desires are that way, we must choose. It is personal, as I said, to remain loyal to the Lord in all things. In all things, we choose to follow the Lord. We can't be slackers in these things. We have to make up our minds and though we know it's something, mm, I, mm, I can't. This is not for me. We have to be self-disciplined. And God's watching. God sees everything you're going to read here or what we're reading. You would say, how would God know? Because he sees. He's everywhere. He's om- omniscient, right? He's, he's, he knows everything. And, and he's um, omnipresent. He sees everything from heaven. And so he calls us on it. Not for our bad, but to get us back on the right path. You and I belong on a straight and narrow path that leads to eternal life. There's people, oh, but we could do this, and there's freedom. That church over there lets you do this. Why can't you do this? And uh, That's not for us. You know what the Lord has put in your heart that, and your own personal convictions, and you must honor those things that you and the Lord know is the way for you to go. All right. So the younger sister now, Jerusalem, 11. Now, although her sister Oholibah saw this, though she saw everything that happened, right? Although she saw this, she became more corrupt in her lust than she, and in her harlotry, more corrupt than her sister's harlotry. So verse 12, she lusted for the neighboring Assyrians, captains and rulers, clothed most gorgeously, horsemen riding on horses, all of them desirable young men. Then I saw that she was defiled. Both took the same way. That's the Lord speaking. But she increased her harlotry. She looked at men portrayed on the wall, images of Chaldeans portrayed in vermilion. So what she's saying is, what he's saying is when they send the delegation, we'll read about that. And on the walls going into Babylon, they had things like what you and I call murals, right? And vermilion is a bright red pigment. So she saw perhaps the officers dressed in red and whatnot. And their turbans, so white turbans, a red garb, you know, uh, uh, it stands out on the wall. And so when you're looking at that, what you're looking at is what a country sells, right? They sell uh, (coughs) good-looking soldiers. When you see the Army commercials, everybody wants to join. When you see the Marines, the few, the proud, the Marines, you know, and they're all dressed up in their uniform, and you say, I want to be one of them. I want that, or I would want them. This is how the the leadership thinks. I want them to protect us against anybody. And so you're looking with these eyes at physical things, the might, the horses, the uniforms. You're saying, wow, who could be like these guys, right? And God is saying, hey, what am I, Swiss cheese? You know, I brought you up. I made you a country, I made you a nation, and you're looking somewhere else. Nothing makes the Lord more jealous than for us to be thinking someone else can do better for us than he himself. And that's why I say to you, we seek out the Lord in whatever your situation is. Stay with seeking the Lord for answers. He'll blow you away. You just must be patient. 
you're going to go through a growing time in your life. How else would you, how else can you have a testimony of letting people know, hey, been there, done that. Let me encourage you, you stay on the path. But you don't understand. I said, we understand. Well, I have to tighten my belt with my family because I don't have the money and everything. Tighten the belt. Tighten the belt, with, you know, financial belt, you know, whatever. Learn to do without. Trust the Lord. Don't be going out there signing for every loan that's available. You know, you'll, you'll be entrapped. You'll be paying off interest for the rest of your lives. Don't go there. Ask the Lord for help. If he directs it to a finance company, fine. But just don't believe all the glitter that you see with your eyes and think it's going to be better. That was the problem with Jerusalem. 15. So she saw them, and then she saw them girded with belts around their waist, flowing turbans on their heads. All of them, all of them looked like captains, meaning distinguished, polished, right? Yeah, in the manner of the Babylonians of Chaldea, the land of their nativity. So 16, as soon as her eyes saw them, she lusted for them and sent messengers to them in Chaldea. So there you go. That's how they knew because she had sent messengers to them, you know, to, hey, we like you guys. To, what, what does it take to join you or whatever or protect us, right? 17, then the Babylonians came to her into the bed of love and they defiled her with their immorality. So she was defiled by them and alienated herself from them. So first it was the same thing. Oh, can you come and help us? Sure, we'll come and help you. You need a hand? Sure, we'll give you a hand. But then it's not just give you a hand, huh? It's if I do for you, then you will do for me. Or else, what do we have you know, in common? You need something from me, I'll do that. But then I want you to also honor my God. Bow before my God. We do it this way, and you're not doing it. No, if you want our blessing, we're greater, and you're asking us for help. So here they come with all their, their, their stuff. And so she was defiled by them. And then <coughs> it's like she recognized it. I'm being used by these people. It's not coming as, as good as it was. It's harder for me. Anytime you, you ask for another country's help, you became what is known as a vassal state. It's, a, it's not that complicated of a word if you understand it. A vassal state means you pay taxes to your keepers. A vassal state is you make sure that they are happy with you in whatever they ask you to do. That is a vassal state. And, and so she becomes a vassal state to them. And when she started feeling that, then she despised them. Then she didn't want anything to do with them. And we remember our king said yes to Babylon, and then on the other side, they're looking to Egypt for help, right? But never going to the Lord, and that's what's happening here. All right, so then the Babylonians came to her into the bed of love, <coughs> and they defiled her, says verse 17, with their immorality. So she was defiled by them and alienated herself from them. She revealed her harlotry and uncovered her nakedness. Then I alienated myself from her. You're going to go and start worshiping other gods. You're going to go, you know, listen, I'm going to step out of the way. I'm not going to, if you're not seeking me, you're seeking something else, fine. I'm going to step out of the way. And that's what, the, what he says. Then I alienated myself from her. And I had alienated myself from, as I had alienated myself from her sister. Yet she multiplied her harlotry. In calling to remembrance the days of her youth when she had played the harlot in the land of Egypt. For she lusted for her paramours. What are paramours? You guys know what paramours are? They're the illicit lovers. They are the lovers who are married to someone else, but you have them for yourself. That's what it is. So she gave herself to others, right? Whose flesh is like the flesh of donkeys and whose issue is like the issue of horses. Thus, you called to remembrance the lewdness of your youth when the Egyptians pressed your bosoms because of your youthful breasts. So, church, the meaning, again, of Oholiba is my tent is here. My tent is, my tent is in her, if you may, right? And what he means is a, a reference to the tabernacle. Remember the tent in the wilderness, uh, the temple, if you may. And though God's spirit had long left them, right, it still represented 
uh, him to the people. Jerusalem did, the temple did. From verse 11 to 16, we learn that Oholibam, Jerusalem, went deeper in her sins of immorality. She was worse than her sister, right? How does this happen? How do you become worse in the sin? Well, she was not faithful to the Lord. Here's the one with the temple. She's the one. The prophets were still there. For both the north and the south, God's prophets would speak to them, but they did not listen to him. How do we today, you and I, how do we fall further from the Lord? You know how? We stop being faithful to the Lord in the areas that we should have stayed faithful to him. There are certain things that you and I should do. Right now, it's the age of the church. And so whether you listen on radio, watching the tube, whenever you can, in church, I'm talking to you here, whenever you can, go to church. If you find yourself in uh, Ohio, go to church on a Sunday. If you find yourself in Florida, go to church on a Sunday. Go find a church and be a part of God's people. We are living at the time of the church, and this time of the church is going to finish. We didn't make up the church. The Lord did, and we need to honor him. Now, don't misunderstand me. We're, it, it doesn't say be legalistic about it. Honey, we can't. No, 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 we've got to be a church. No, there's no way we can drive today. We've got to go. To, no, there's some things that you're not going to be legalistic about. But when you can, go to church. That's who we should be. That's our default all the time, right? So she was not faithful to the Lord. And sometimes we are not faithful to the Lord. And that's how we get into a worse situation. We stop being faithful to the Lord when we should have stayed loyal to the Lord. When we look at verse 12, we learn that, the, that at first she also lusted after the Assyrians. So she was doing the same thing. Then when she, when she had uh, sent a delegation, verse 16, to Babylon, and they noticed what you and I, again, as I said, call murals or handsome, well-dressed, important horsemen, portrayed in bright red colors, vermilion, she lusted for them. She wanted to go after them. It's interesting, in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 16, verse 7, we learn that she invited them to her land. Come to Israel. You know, if you come to Israel, let me tell you what we have, not to Israel, but come to Jerusalem. We have a temple, and in our temple, we have precious stones, we have gold, we have this and that. She started doing this, so the, the, the people are saying, okay, we'll come. And now you're asking me again to come, why? To protect you against other countries, this is what, uh, what they're looking at. From verse 13, the Lord saw that she, she was as her sister. And finally, from verse 21, she recalled her youthful sins in the land of Egypt. And she multiplied her harlotry and gave herself over to the Babylonians. So here is the tale of two sisters. What is God going to do with his people? Judgment on Jerusalem. 22. Look at your Bible. Therefore, O Hilabah. O holy bond, right? Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will stir up your lovers against you. What? But I love them. I gave everything to them. How come they're going to be against me? Why do they hate me so much? It's amazing how in some divorces I have seen people fall in love, get married, and they're, the honeymoon is the sweetest thing. Five years later, they hate each other. And you don't get it. How could you hate the one you loved, right? You say it can never happen. How many of you guys know it can happen? <laughs> it can happen. There's a hatred. I mean, it is crazy. I wish he was dead. I wish he was dead. You know, and you hear these things. You say, wait, wait, wait. Isn't that the gal you came down the aisle? Well, we're not going to talk about that, Pastor Ben. I hate them, you know, or whatever. Bad thing. It's not a good thing. But we see how it can happen. So, uh, Behold, I will stir up your lovers against you from whom you have alienated yourself. So uh, she didn't like the way Babylon was taking advantage of her, a vassal state, as I said, they have to pay too much tax, whatever it was. And she hated and despised them. But who's God going to use? He's going to use those that you hate to come against you, at least in this case, right? From whom you have alienated yourself. I will bring them against you from every side. The Babylonians. <laughs> All the Chaldeans, Pekot and Shoah and Koah, which were like communities of the Babylonians as well. All the Assyrians with them. All of them desirable young men, governors and rulers, 
captains and men of renown, all of them riding on horses. So, yeah, they were handsome. The army was well equipped. It looked really sharp as they did their drills, just as the Marines, the army, or the Navy, whoever's graduating from boot camp. You remember how sharp everybody looked on graduation day? Yeah, they were all that, but now he's bringing them against them. 24, and they shall come against you with chariots, wagons, and war horses. With a horde of people, they shall array against you, buckler, shield, and helmet all around. I will delegate judgment to them, and they shall judge you according to their judgments. Again, the Babylonians, like the Assyrians, it wasn't pretty when they came against you. And what does the Lord say? Well, there's not going to be no court or, or kind of a, a judgment by judges or anything like that. Or how he would do it with his people. Uh-uh. He's going to let them come with their own judgment, however they saw fit to punish them or to conquer them. 25, I will set my jealousy against you. So who did they make jealous? By going to other countries. They made God jealous. And instead of, and so he's going to come back, and in their hands, he's going to let that jealousy come out against them. And they shall deal furiously with you. They shall remove your noses and your ears. What do you think? Pretty bad, huh? Uh, we say, oh, you can't start using that uh, water and those guys to, to kind of torture them. These guys are taking off ears and noses. Should we take it literal? Yeah, I think we should. And your remnant shall fall by the sword. And they shall take your sons and your daughters, and your remnant shall be devoured by fire. So the main people they would take care of, and those that were left and were running, they were going to die in another way. They were going to die by fire. They also shall strip you of your clothes and take away your beautiful jewelry. So then again, how did they start coming? How did they know? Because they sent delegations and they said, if you, if you take care of us, we can pay you. We'll be that vassal state. We got jewels. We got this and that. They opened their mouth about all this stuff. So the Lord says they're going to take away all that beautiful jewelry that they had. Thus, 27, I will make you cease your lewdness and your harlotry brought from the land of Egypt so that you will not lift your eyes to them nor remember Egypt anymore. It would take, and people don't realize this, it will take something harsh to get people to turn from their wicked ways and turn to the Lord. The tribulation period that's coming, we have no clue as to how harsh it's going to be. But the purpose for that is to get his people to turn to him once again. Because there's no other way for human beings to, to learn. There's just no other way, and the Lord does that. It would be great if they said, huh, hmm, I've been seeing this, I've been thinking about this, I think I'm going to repent. God desires that you do that. God really desires that you come to your senses and come back to the Lord. But most people won't do it. They'll die, oh, I'm angry with you, go kill me now. And there you go. You know, so it's, it's a horrible place to be. All right, verse 28. For thus says the Lord God, surely... I will deliver you into the hand of those you hate, into the hand of those from whom you alienated yourself. They will deal hatefully with you, take away all you have worked for, and leave you naked and bare. The nakedness of your harlotry shall be uncovered, both your lewdness and your harlotry. I will do these things to you because you have gone as a harlot after the Gentiles. Because you have become defiled by their idols. You have walked in the way of your sister. Therefore, I will put her cup in your hand. Thus says the Lord God, <coughs> you shall drink of your sister's cup, the deep and wide one. You shall be laughed to scorn and held in derision. It contains much, this cup. You will be filled with drunkenness and sorrow, the cup of horror and desolation. The cup of your sister, Samaria. You shall drink and drain it. You shall break its shards and tear your own breast. Tear at your own breast. For I have spoken, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord God. Because you have forgotten me and cast me behind your back. 
Therefore, you shall bear the penalty of your lewdness and your harlotry. So church, as a result, this is horrible. I mean, to, to hear this, that they have cast him behind their back, it's like you and I are saying, you know what, Lord, we don't need you. And if we're moving towards globalism and the only way I'm going to get my Social Security check and the only way I'm going to go this and that, maybe, I, you know, I, I got to do everything they tell me to do. Stop going to church on Sunday. Well, Lord, I think I'm going to have to stop coming to church on Sunday. Stop tuning into Christian radio. Lord, I'm going to have to turn off Christian radio. I mean, I say that, but you don't know what's coming. But as it's moving towards globalism, it's going to be the whole pandemic thing again. They're going to do it on purpose. The first one was a test. We almost got everybody to, to comply. Then they came out, yeah, it wasn't true. The mask didn't do anybody any good. You know, this and that. Uh, they're, it, it's coming again. They're going to use those kind of tactics to put the first the fear and then to give them the answer. If you do this and that, and, and boom, they move their society towards uh, being subservient to a one world government. That's what it is. The, and money is the next thing that's going to go. I mean, they've tried uh, your health. The next thing is going to be your wallet. That's just the way the world's going to do things. You know, this. you heard about the, uh, the reset, the great reset. You heard about things, and I shared with you how uh, having a good credit now works against you. They'll penalize you. They'll charge you an extra point or two to give those dollars to the ones that have bad credit. And so they take the money away from those that are making something to equalize with the poor. And they have you all, bah, bah, the same kind of people all around. The move towards globalization is real. And they're planning those kind of things even now in Geneva, as Pastor Jack was saying uh, this week. And, and um, they did some interviews over there. And it's just incredible what's going on in the world out there. All right. So... As a result, well, we should know this, right? Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who, shows to his, for he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. So the first one, for these guys, they mocked the Lord. They didn't think that the Lord would rescue them. They didn't have trust in the Lord, so they went to these other countries. And look how it worked out for them. That is a big picture or a picture of what happens to uh, people when they leave the Lord, when they just said, you know what, I'm not going to obey the Lord. I'm going to go do things my way. They usually have a hard time. And only for years later to repent of their sins and say, I don't know why I walked away from the Lord, but I did. I thought I was smarter. I was going to do things my way. Again, in all things, the, driving this home, stay loyal to the Lord. No matter what it costs you, stay loyal to the Lord. Church, for they're not being loyal to the Lord, the results were horrific. I mean, absolutely horrific. First, it's the dad, the wife, then their kids, and then their kids' kids. You haven't been bringing them up in the things of the Lord. It, it, they're out there. They are out there, and you try to reason with them. They are out there, and sometimes it's because we did not do our part. We were not the example, not with every family, but surely with many. And when, when you think about not with every family, Billy Graham, I don't think there could have been a better house than Billy Graham, and yet his son, Franklin, says, I was a rebel and even wrote a book about it, right? And he was. So it's not for everyone, but at least the, the, the major thing is if you lead by example, if, if you stay with your kids, if you're reading the word to them and, and keeping them plugged into whatever you can that uh, praises the Lord and worships the Lord, uh, your kids might wander a little bit. Most of them come back at the end. Isn't that a prayer request? <laughs> Lord, bring my kids back, right? But if not, you know, if they keep going and keep going, there's a price to pay, and it is horrific. Again, it's God's words that says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. And that's for the children. The children should know that. Anyone that's living out there, you should know this. You, know, you knew about God. You knew his principles. And you're mocking him the way you're living. You're going to reap bad stuff. For he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life church for they're not being loyal to the lord the result was horrific as i said from verse 22 we learned that god would destroy 
Oholibah by her Babylonian lovers. He would use her lovers to destroy her. From verse 23 and 24, all those lusted over desirable young men would treat her hatefully. They would be the army that they would see killing the kids, killing them. And do not kid yourself. When one tries to find satisfaction in the world, in the worldly world, as did Oholibah and today's Christians, you know, uh, when they try to find satisfaction in the world, they turn their back on loyalty to the Lord. The Lord must judge them. He will judge them. Considering verse 33 and 34, we find that they describe the symptoms of depression and despair, which is not only rampant in our city, but all over the world. So this cup that they're going to be drinking and now you're trying to drown your problems, not a good thing. This is what Jesus said. Jesus said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink, right? So trying to make life happen on your own, <laughs> it's going to make you thirsty. You're going to become weary trying to make life uh, without the Lord. <clears throat> Not a good thing. We need a drink of God's living water. We need to get back to the word and trust him that he will make a miracle for us. All right. Both sisters judge. Verse 36, look at your Bible. The Lord said to me, son of man, will you judge Ohola and Oholiba? Then declare to them their abominations, for they have committed adultery, and blood is on their hands. They have committed adultery with their idols and even sacrificed their sons whom they bore to me, passing them through the fire to devour them. So, see, even if they were out there, those kids that were born, if they were sacrificing them, they're God's kids. And everything he said not to do, they're doing this. They've done this, right? Verse 38, moreover, they have done this to me. Again, it's personal. They have defiled my sanctuary on the same day and profaned my Sabbath. For after they had slain their children for their idols, on the same day they came into my sanctuary to profane it. As, and indeed, thus they have done in the midst of my house. So it's doing all these sins out there and then coming back to church and pretending nothing has happened. Not a good thing before the Lord. We're not taking him serious. You know, you, we cannot be doing, we cannot, we should not. But then to do it and not come in that, or not where we're at, ask God for forgiveness and then come into to God's house and echo, raise up your hands like you're, you're Mr. Holy or Mrs. Holy. Not a good thing at all. We have to reckon with our sins. 40. Furthermore, you sent for men to come from afar to whom a messenger was sent. And there they came and you washed yourself for them, painted your eyes, and adorned yourself with ornaments. You sat on a stately couch with a table prepared before it, on which you had my incense and my oil. Listen, if God has blessed you with things, don't use it for the wrong things. You know, the Lord has blessed you with stuff, and if there's things that you dedicated to the Lord, don't use them for the wrong things. 42, the sound of a carefree multitude was with her. And Sabians, Sabians are another word for the low lives or the drunkards. The Sabians were brought from the wilderness with men of common sort who put bracelets on their wrists and beautiful crowns on their heads. Then I said concerning, concerning her who had grown old in adulteries, will they commit harlotry with her now and she with them? 44, yet they went into her as men go into a woman who plays the harlot. Thus they went into Ohola and Oholiba, the lewd women. But the righteous men would judge them after the manner of adulteresses and after the manner of women who shed blood, because they are adulteresses and blood is on their hand. 46. <coughs> For thus says the Lord God, bring up an assembly against them. Give them up to trouble and plunder. The assembly shall stone them with stones and execute them with their swords. They shall slay their sons and their daughters and burn their houses with fire. Thus I will cause lewdness to cease from the land that all women may be taught not to practice your lewdness. They shall repay you for your lewdness and you shall pay for your idolatrous sins. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So church, both sisters were guilty of the same sins. Adultery, both uh, literally and spiritually, 
right? They were also guilty of murder. They offered human sacrifices. Verse 37 informs us that they sacrificed their son to whom they had born to the Lord. From verse 37, 38, we learn that they desecrated the temples and they did this on the Sabbath days when they were supposed to be honoring the Lord and thanking him for everything they had, he had done for them. From verse 39, we learn that they had backslidden so far, so far that they were mixing idolatry with uh, worship of God. They didn't know the difference now. They had slipped so far. They were, you know, had idols in their temples. They were doing this and that. It was horrible, right? Verse 40 to 44, we learned that they were committing spiritual adulteries with foreigners. And from 45 to 49, we read about righteous men would judge them. And yet we know that the righteous men are a reference to the Babylonians. It is not an understanding. It's not that the Babylonians were righteous before God as we are through Jesus Christ. No, but they were righteous in a way that they were obedient to God as he punished the sisters for their lewdness and their disloyalty to him. They were faithful. When God put in their heart, go and punish them, they did. It was his right arm that used them to take care of things. And at the end, Judah's religion was a mix, again, that combined, as I was saying, the worship of idols and God, uh, worship of God, and then paganism, doing their different things in their churches. So as we close... I want to exhort you, I really do, in all things, stay loyal to the Lord. In all things, everything that he, he reminds you of, there's a way to do things, there's a way that honors God, and, and they're not new things for you, they're things that you already know. Stay loyal to our God and our Lord Jesus Christ. He is coming soon. He really is coming soon, and we don't want to be compromised in a compromised position trying to please the world, and trying to please him at the same time. Remember, 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 our God is a jealous God. May we never put him, and may we never put our worship of him in second place. May we never do that, right? Uh, so with that, we're going to go ahead and close. Tough chapter, huh? I mean, tough chapter. And, and again, the Lord, he remembers how they were in Egypt. You know, it's interesting because I thought about this when I was doing the study. <coughs> when we confess our sins to the Lord, he puts them away. And he says, I will never, I, I, I won't remember your sins anymore. But if you leave that state of being with the Lord, if, if you're out there, you know, going back to the B.C. days, when the, it seems like the Lord has all these sins that you did. Listen, you did this before. What was the outcome of it? So already he remembered that. But that's not when you're walking with him. That's when you are running from him. When you're going 100 miles the opposite direction. For those of us that have gone that way, did it go good? Was it a great thing? I remember, you know, hugging the China God for the last time, saying, I'm not going to drink again. I'm, blah, you know, flushing. I'm, you know, just my arms around that China God, you know. You get it, right? The toilet bowl. Not a good thing. I remember one time Judy left me out, you know, just out there. Another time I remember... Uh, friends <laughs> calling Judy, come and get your husband. He is messed up in our early years. I mean, Judy says, you got him that way, you keep him. I don't want him home. Click. You know, and so the Lord says to us, yeah, I have forgiven you of your sins. I've taken these things away. But if you and I go backwards because we're mad, because I don't like what that pastor told me, and I don't like what, uh, who do they think they are, right? Uh, there's people that get upset with their church, upset with their pastors, and they want to go down the street and they'll do the same somewhere else. People tell me, go chase them. Don't let them go. Go say something. Defend yourself. I am not about to chase anybody. I didn't bring them here. I didn't save them. And the Lord is my defense. I will keep going until the Lord takes me home or does whatever. But for you, my brothers, and for me, remain loyal to the Lord in all things. And he'll take us through to the end. Let's pray. Father, what a tough chapter, Lord. But yet we see our world, Lord, moving towards that globalism. As you said, a one world government, Lord. And so help us, Lord, to be wise and that we may distinguish, Lord, what is what pleases you and what, not, what doesn't, Lord. We don't want gray areas, Lord. We want, it, we want to know that we're in the light and walking in the light. And we need you, Lord. 
So help us draw near to you. Holy Spirit, we look to you to guide us, to help us. Convict us, Lord, of these things that uh, we're even playing around with that we shouldn't be playing around with, Lord. Help us to be true to you, loyal to you. We ask you these things in Jesus' name. And bless, Lord, those who are here. Bless those who are listening on radio, those who are watching on YouTube, Lord, uh, on the stream. Bless them, Lord, for they took some time to spend in your presence. And, Lord, what a, what a night, Lord. What, what uh, an admonition for them. We get the parable, Lord. We understand what you are talking about, Lord. So help us, Lord, be faithful and loyal to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.